I call on Representative Felisen for the Inafresi. Inafresi. Thank you, you may be seated. Would I be able to get the first roll call? Representative Attaway. Representative Angara. Representative Blas. Representative Carranza. Representative Casilla. Representative Cruz. Representative Delori. Representative DeSocho. Representative Ferrin. Representative Felison. Representative LeBang. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Makepeace. Vice Speaker McDonald. Representative McDonald. Representative Quintaniza. Representative Richards. Representative Rigetti. Speaker Santos. Representative Stiles, Representative Tomogan, Representative Valencia. Mr. Speaker, you have a quorum. Thank you. Moving on to call for approval of the legislative journal. Uh, Representative Valencia, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to waive legislative items. 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. There's been a motion to waive items 7 through 11. Uh, is there anyone opposed? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Valencia. Moving on to... Uh, Moving on to number 12, uh, introduction and first reading of bills and resolutions. Could I get the uh, first reading of the bills and resolutions?
Bill number 17-31, an act to amend section 7107 of chapter seven, title two, Guam code annotated, relative to rescheduling the Guam Youth Congress election in order to align with other student government elections. Resolution number 12-31, introduced by Al Eldridge C. LeBang, Jane Angara, Byron Blas, Kenny F. McDonald. Relative to respectfully requesting the Speaker of the 31st Guam Youth Congress, the Chairperson of Committee on Rules of the 31st Guam Youth Congress, the Executive Director, of Elihis Laturan Guahan and the Administrative Officer of the Guam Youth Congress to work together on oversight of the Excellence in Youth Leadership Award as stated in subsection 7111 and 7112 of Chapter 7, Title 2, Guam Code Annotated, <coughs> and requesting all youth committee organizations and representatives of the 31st Guam Youth Congress to nominate youth leaders that meet the criteria stated in the section 7112 of chapter 7, title 2, Guam Code Annotated. Thank you. Um, moving on to motions. Uh, I'd like to call on representative, uh, I'd like to call on representative Lorenzo to take the Take the chair. Speaker Santos, you are recognized. I'd like to make a motion to move Bill 17-31 into the second reading into the second reading file. Okay, there has been a motion to move Bill 17-31 to the second reading file. All opposed or all in favor? Say raise your hand, please. Okay, there's Unanimous vote of yes, it is passed. Okay. And it is moved to the second reading file. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I introduced bill number 17-31 just as a, supposedly to create more alignment with the Youth Congress with the rest of the student body, uh, the student government organizations and the other schools. When I was in school, and, when I was in high school and I represented my school, and even now as a representative of the University of Guam, I find that the election process and the, the separation of it from the rest of the other student body elections, it kind of creates this gap in between um, what we can do for the school in coordination with the student government associations. Just because we rotate out at different times and we f I, I feel as though this uh, alignment, amending the, amending the Youth Congress law to align it with the student government elections is advantageous because if all the student government elections, including Youth Congress, happen at the same time, then there's more cohesion in that student government and there's more unity within the student government organizations. Uh, especially in working with the Guam Youth Congress, which is supposed to be the youth's channel into the Guam legislature and into our government. The Guam Youth Congress is supposed to be a body where we can reach to our government and we as youth can tell 
the government and to, to tell the government our ideas and to tell the government what we think they should be doing. Because really the youth of Guam are the future and we should have a say in the future that we inherit. In or, so by authoring this bill and changing it to uh, election, the election to happen at the same time as the student government, I hope that the unity and that uh, connection to the government and to our and to Elihas Latour and Guahan is more developed in the school process. And it just seems to align better with a lot of the school year in general. The Guam Congress le elections happening in October, the way it has it's now, I understand the, the merit of having it in October because we get sworn in in November. It really, the, the election process really mirrors the legislature in that way because of the fact that it happens in a similar amount of time and we're all campaigning at a similar time, but really a lot of us uh, did our campaignings in the school. There are some village representatives that uh, do serve today, but a lot of us do our campaigning through our school. And a lot of us, if we are representatives to our school, we have a role to play in our student government. I, I understand the merits of both arguments, and I'm interested to see the body's perspective on this issue. I will be proctoring an amendment just to fix something, just to fix uh, minor details into the bill, but before I do that, I would like to hear the body's uh, concerns or suggestions or inputs on this bill and go from there to see what we do with this bill. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Madam Chair. Thank you, Speaker Santos, for your intro. Would any of the representatives like to speak for or against this bill? Representative LeBang, you are recognized. Madam Chair, I support this bill. Um, it says here that April for your villages, right? Um, in the past, we talked about Heat Month, which happened during April, and in the past, I supported a resolution recognizing the month of April as Youth Month. I think it will have more youth involvement in villages, on election in villages, because um, some, we all know that some of us just get like, we don't really get voted, like we just get appointed by the mayor. And I think youth involvement is really important in Youth Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Representative LeBang. Is there anyone else that would like to speak for or against this bill? Speaker Santos, you are recognized. Um, Madam Chair, if there's no if there's no one else who wishes to speak on the bill, I'd like to call for a two-minute recess so I can work on my amendment. Okay, there's been a call for a two-minute recess. All opposed, or all for it, say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, there's recess.
I now call session back in order. Whenever you're ready, Speaker Santos. I'm sorry, do we need more time? Representative Makepeace. I would just like to state my support of the bill just due to the fact that it would help to alleviate a lot of the different stresses that we have uh, comparing both our student body councils, student governments, uh, class officers and the like with our representative officials. This would help alleviate it due to the fact that it would be unifying these and I feel that this would be a very uh, useful bill. Thank you. Yes, Speaker Santos. I would like to propose an amendment to the bill um, on lines 5 and 6 of page 2 uh, to read school, student, government, election, if held, and the third Monday of April for schools without elections and villages, and every two years thereafter, the election. There has been an amendment. Would anyone like to speak on the amendment? Representative Lorenzo. Thank you, Vice Speaker. Um, I would like to express my support for this amendment because I do feel that it does clarify any problems that could be, that could come up, that could arise with the student government elections and I feel like it does clarify it for it overall and I just, I would like to express my support of the amendment. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the amendment? Okay. Have a vote for the amendment. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, there has been. Let's let's call for a, a two-minute recess. Yes. Uh, Speaker Loren, or five-minute recess. Okay, there has been a call for five-minute recess.
I now call session back in order. Speaker Santos. Um, so yeah, I introduced this amendment just to make the clarification out of uh, concerns that not all schools that represented uh, or that can be representative by the Youth Congress have student government elections. There's a lot of smaller schools that historically have been a part of the Youth Congress that don't have elections and by no way uh, do I want the bill to be interpreted as uh, mandating those student government elections in those smaller schools. So I just wanted to make that clarification so that the if they don't have the student government elections, then they can follow the format that's set in place by the villages. Uh, and yeah, that's the amendment. And I look forward to hearing everybody's testimony on it. We'll call for the Thank vote you, Madam Chair. The, oh. We'll call for the vote on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. Okay, amendment passes. Would anyone else like to speak on the resolution? Bill, I'm sorry. If there is no one else, Speaker Santo. Oh, I'm sorry. Representative Richards, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am opposed to this bill uh, strictly because I feel that uh, the, the purpose of the Guam Youth Congress is more to more of an introduction of the youth into um, our local government rather than bringing our local government to the, the youth level. So I feel that um, it should mirror the legislature more than it should mirror student government elections just for that purpose. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on the bill? Representative DeChoso. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so I think I just wanted to share my, uh, my support for the bill, uh, even though I'm pretty sure uh, for the most part, it's, uh, we can all agree that this bill does have its practicalities. And I think uh, the concept that I wanted to share that I felt was the most important uh, part of this bill is the idea that we have to keep Youth Congress, I guess, going, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, one of the struggles that I saw, particularly in Ukudu, I'm, I'm not too sure about the perspective in other schools, but in Ukudu, what, what issue we had was uh, finding people who are interested in joining Youth Congress. And I think one of the issues with that is because uh, uh, the elections happen at such an inconvenient time as it is. Uh, most people are already in the swing of the school year. Most people cannot be uh, uh, most people cannot be bothered by it. And so, in the specific time frame that when uh, a representative Felicin and myself, when we first joined uh, Youth Congress, uh, there wasn't a lot of people who stepped up to the plate to the plate the same way that we did. And and I think it's because of the time frame in which the elections happened. So I think the most important thing to remember is that in order to keep uh, Youth Congress going with more representatives and more youth who are interested in governing uh, and, and in government, uh, it's important to maybe match their schedule, or f for, for lack of a better way to phrase it, uh, in order for us to continue the longevity of Youth Congress. And to ignore that is to neglect our responsibilities as representatives. Uh, so, yes, that's why I'm in support of the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on the bill? If there are none, Speaker Santos, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, in closing, I just want to express the intentions of the bill are to make you Congress more coherent and more give you Congress members the ability to represent the youth better and to interact with the youth better. And I 
thank all the testimony that was heard, that was given on the bill, and it really rounded out my perspective on the issue overall. But I just, I, I do believe that this bill should pass because I see it as a way for people to go, for, for people to see Youth Congress as aligned with all these other entities instead of it being uh, all, all the other entities in their student government as opposed to it being something that's created, it was created separately, but the functions are so similar and there's so much potential to the cooperation of the functions of the two bodies that I feel like it'd be at, advantageous to the schools, to the youth that they represent, and to the representatives who might be interested if they were to uh, go and run at the same time as the other student government elections. Um, building off of what, uh, of the testimony of Representative Choso, I feel as though if the Youth Congress were in aligned with the other student government, then people who were interested in leadership positions would be more inclined to spread out in order to support, uh, to represent in various different ways. And with the elections being in April, and for, or the elections being uh, separate from the Youth Congress, the elections, all those leaders who wanted to be in student government have already taken a position in their student government, and they have all these other responsibilities that go with it. And if it were offered alongside uh, these other positions, then it could be seen just as much as an important leadership position to them. And I see that as advantageous because you get uh, leaders who are willing to reach out to the rest of their community. And I, I, I just see it as more uh, becoming more accessible. I feel, like the, I feel like this bill makes Youth Congress more accessible in terms of the elections being around the same time because that way schools can organize one single election and have it so that, have it so that all of these leadership positions are on the same playing field as opposed to using government or using school resources to organize the election for the rest of the student government and for the Youth Congress separately. There might not be as much support or motivation to bring them these organization of these two elections to the same caliber. And that accessibility to the candidate and the accessibility to those who we serve and represent to vote on it, it should be seen as important to uh, when we have our elections. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for uh, allowing me to listen or allowing me to hear the bill on this floor. And with that being said, I'd like to move bill number 17-31 to the third reading file. There has been a motion to move bill number 17-31 to the third reading file. Are there any objections? There are none. Motion passes. Speaker Santos, would you like to take the chair? Okay, so we are still on item 13, motions. Are there any other motions? Representative LeBang, you are recognized. Mr. Speaker, I move to a motion to move resolution 12-31 to the second reading file. There's been a motion to move resolution 12-31 to the second reading file. Are there anyone, are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Representative LeBang, you can make your opening statements. 
Mr. Speaker and my fellow representatives, we are all bound together in the Guam Youth Congress to represent the youth of our island. Chapter 7, Title 2 of Guam Code Annotated, allow our legislative body to happen. Section 7111 of Chapter 7, Title 2 of Guam Code Annotated, have given our body the authority to recognize outstanding, outstanding hardworking, and excellent youth leaders. Representative Jane Angaro, Representative Byron Doss, Representative Kenny McDonald, and myself wrote this resolution to respectfully request the Executive Director of Guam Legislature, the, ex the Administrative Officers of the Guam Youth Congress, Representative Christian Valencia, Chairman of the Committee of Rules, and Secretary Lorenzo, and Speaker J. Val Santos to start the process of selecting, nominating, and for the whole body for distributing the award. My view is to recognize the youth leaders. Youth Month is just two months away, and it seems so near. But let me ask everyone in this chamber why we are here. The answer is to represent the youth and to let our island leaders know what the youth of Guam wants. Due to the short time for the award to be given, I would say nothing is impossible. If we all contribute and, dedicate, and be dedicated for participating for the nomination and the selection process of the recipient, recipients, it is possible that by month of April, we will be recognizing an excellent and outstanding and a hardworking youth leader. My fellow representatives, we are here not just to socialize, or we are not just here for the $25 compensation. We are here to represent the youth of Guam who voted for us. My fellow representative, if my vision and yours aligns, please vote yes to this resolution. And if you have something to make this resolution better, please ha not hesitate to contribute. Thank you. Thank you, Representative LeBang. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on the resolution? Representative Valencia, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as one of the people being called out by this resolution, I would just like to say that I am wholeheartedly in support of this resolution. Um, however, it's just that I know that the leadership has talked about this initiative before. I mean, we tried to um, really get in the gist of it. It's just that we might be lacking in resources as, as regarding um, creating the award and sending it out. But I'm willing to um, look into the matter and um, ensure that youth leaders in our community are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Valencia. Is there anybody else who would wish to speak on the resolution? Uh, Representative McDonald, you are recognized. Kenny McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to speak on my support for this resolution and to speak for the youth because I feel this resolution will allow for the youth leaders and student leaders to receive formal recognition where it is due. I am sure all of these student leaders do make all of their efforts and plan all of their initiatives on their own times while balancing school, sports, and of course their families. So I feel the student leaders should feel appreciated for all of their work. And by having this formal recognition, I feel they'll be inspired to continue their efforts and initiatives and hopefully to speak with their peers and also inspire them to become student leaders in their school and community. So I hope you all support this resolution for a good cause. Thank you. Thank you, Representative McDonald. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on the resolution? Uh, Representative Lorenzo, you're recognized. Thank you, Speaker Santos. I, I have a question for um, Representative LeBang. Uh, Representative LeBang, will you yield to question? Uh, Representative Lorenzo, you can ask your question. 
Um, so, Representative Lebing, does this bill, or I'm sorry, does this award, is it just for Youth Congress or does it involve other schools? And then if it does involve other schools, what are the, what are, like, what's the process of it? Or is this resolu resolution to have a process for it? Or am I just reading it wrong? Um, I don't believe it's just for Youth Congress alone. I think other youth organizations can nominate one if they wish to. It's just um, if we nominate under the title, it says that we have have a written report. Yeah, we should have a written report about the person who we nominating to. I think it's on the Guam code and favor. Uh, Representative yeah. Valencia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to make a point of information. Uh, all right. Um, I'd just like to briefly explain the, the award. So the Excellence in Youth Leadership Award is actually written under the Youth Congress law, under the Guam Code Annotated. And the purpose of the Guam Youth Congress is to, um, I guess, conduct the, um, the process of, so the schools nominate the youth leaders or the community, uh, the community organizations, they nominate their um, youth leaders. And so the Youth Congress votes on whether, um, who receives the award. Does that explain? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Valencia and Representative LeBang. I just wanted clarification. Thank you. And I'd just like to clarify the, the fact that Many of the whereas clauses seem to be quoted from the Guam Code annotated itself. So the, many of these whereas clauses are just acknowledging the current existing law. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak on the resolution? Uh, Representative Bloss, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, as one of the co-sponsors for Resolution 12-31, I would like to, of course, still voice my support of this resolution. Um, since the resolution itself has been explained, I would just like to voice my personal concern. Um, the fact that this, uh, this award will be given out, it will not only recognize youth leaders who are already existing, who are working with their communities, working for them, this would also instill inspiration for the youth of today. I just feel like that our generation now is so um, accepting of change that they aren't willing to make that change. And this award would give that chance for us not only to follow um, the recipients of the award's example, but to lead in, of course, other areas. And of course, this would also open another door for our organization to publis publicize ourselves, since in my personal experience, not everyone knows about the Guam Youth Congress itself. And so I urge all of you to please vote to approve this resolution, since it would show the, youth, show the people who are leading us today that the youth existing now are willing to be the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Bloss. Is there anyone else who would like to make a testimony on the bill? Or the resolution, I'm sorry. Seeing as there are none, uh, Representative LeBang, you can make your closing statement. Um, I would like to thank all the representatives who sh showed support on this bill, and restitution, rather. Um, I just want to point out that we, the youth, are the future. We, the youth, will continue what our fathers or our ancestors have created. And we need to continue what they started and to make it better. Thank you, that's all. Are there any motions? <laughs> I'm resolution 12, oh no, wait, 12 31 to the third reading file. There's been a motion to move resolution 12 31 to the third reading file. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing as there are none, motion passed. Uh, I'd like to call Representative Valencia to the chair.
Um, representatives, we're still on item number 13, motions. Um, we're still entertaining many motions. Um, our Speaker Santos, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to uh, make a motion, notwithstanding House rules, to uh, place, or place Bill 18-31 onto the session agenda. The reason why I would like to proctor this, because I feel that uh, at this time the body should uh, take the time to discuss the bill, and uh, the reason why the motion is notwithstanding House rules is because the bill hasn't gone through the committee process yet, but I feel as though this bill is pertinent enough to uh, discuss among the, the body as a whole, and I feel that this is a bill that would be really advantageous for um, us to discuss as soon as... Uh, uh, Um, I feel that this is a bill that should be, uh, that if the will of the body is to discuss now, that we should make an effort to discuss the bill. Uh, and with that being said, my motion is notwithstanding House rules to place bill number 18-31 onto the session agenda. There has been a motion um, notwithstanding the rules to place bill number 18-31 in the second reading file. Are there any objections? There's been an objection. Um, I'll call for a hand vote. Um, all those in favor of placing bill number 18-31 on the second reading file, please raise your hand. Motion passes. Vice Speaker McDonald, you are recognized. Let us be reminded that Guahan is living with the unacceptable fear of stray dogs in our communities. That these stray animals impose dangers to all our youth, the elderly, and all who walk our streets. The stray animals enter property and the community, and the community takes these problems into their own hands, which can lead to the injury of the animals and the people themselves. This bill creates a funding source for an animal control unit so that the people of Guahan don't walk our streets in fear of getting chased, attacked, or even bit. Many of the states have reg registration and microchipping laws in place so that pet owners become more responsible for the care of their animals and out of the safety of their people. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Speaker McDonald. On the main motion, any representatives who would like to speak on the bill? Speaker Santos, you are recognized. I would just like to express my support of Bill 18-31 and would just like to uh, go over some of the amendments that it's made to the current pet licensing law. Um, the intention of the bill is to, uh, or one of the intentions of the bill is to create revenue for an animal control uh, fund by uh, allowing pet licensing uh, or creating a fee for pet licensing. And I find pet licensing to be important to the community for uh, many reasons, not only because in the event that a dog has gone stray, the uh, people can identify the owner of the dog and be able to return the dog to its belongings, but also the animal control program, I feel as though, could help the stray dog problem that does plague our island. And I can, uh, I, I've spoken to many representatives who have had concerns with the cost of the stray, of the pet licensing, and I agree that uh, the, the cost of the pet licensing might be hard to swallow for many low-income uh, individuals, but at the same time, I feel as though these animals deserve to have the best life possible, and I feel as though animals are expensive, 
and animals require and pets require the certain the certain amount of care and the certain amount of of just uh, ensuring that they're healthy and all of that must be taken into consideration and uh, and the fee I feel can be set as a stepping stone to ensuring that if the if the family is able to pay the $45 licensing fee then they would be able to uh, then at the very least they should be able to uh, have the financial means to support a pet. Uh, is the bill perfect? I would like to argue, I would not say that it is. Uh, some of the concerns that I have with the bill uh, are that if the pet licensing fee is uh, established without any sort of penalty for not pet licensing, uh, because the pet licensing is already established into law right now. And from my opinion, the reason why, despite it being in law, nobody has been enforcing it is, or at least one of the reasons, is that there's no funds, or as it stands now, there are no funds, and as it stands for enforcement, and as it stands right now, there is no real penalty for not having a pet license besides the fact that it's written in law. So uh, though this bill isn't perfect, I, I, one of the things that uh, I would feel would greatly improve this bill is an establishment of penalties for not licensing. But otherwise, this is an issue that I feel uh, by starting this conversation and, cr and showing, the, showing the youth of, sh showing the population of Guam as a whole that this is something that we want to tackle because this is an issue that plagues our communities and it is really uns it, it is really unsafe for all involved the children who are walking home from school and the animals who might accidentally uh, wander onto the road I, f I feel as though uh, encouraging these pet licenses can be the steps to avoiding many of these things. And though the bill isn't perfect, it starts the conversation. And I wholeheartedly ask all of the fellow representatives to support this bill. Be, uh, yeah, to support this bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Speaker Santos. On the main motion, are there any other representatives who would like to speak? Representative LeBang, you are recognized. Mr. Chair, I just want to give my full support on this bill because um, some scenarios that Speaker Sanders gave it happened to me, like being chased by a dog. Like there's one time I came home from school, from the bus, I'm walking home and a dog chased me. And I've been bitten by a dog already. And, like I was like biking one time and a, dog, a stray dog approached me and started biting me. Um, <clears throat> I would say that one thing about having pet license is to give owner the responsibility of taking care of your dog and not turning it to stray. And there's a lot, a lot of people here on Guam, they walk around, they jog around, and they run to stay healthy. And I think it will make them safer. And with this bill that if they get bitten by a stray dog, we, with a microchip, we can find who is the owner and who is going to be responsible for the fees that comes with it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Lubang. On the main motion, are there any other representatives who would like to speak? Secretary Lorenzo, you are recognized. Thank you, Chairperson Valencia. Um, I would like to say that I support the intent of this bill. However, I do have concerns, and those. Okay, and I have concerns. So, if this bill was to pass, and there is a collection of stray dogs on the street, 
where would those dogs go? Most likely to gain, which is the only public animal shelter. And I just found out that gain does in fact do euthanasia. So our fatality rate for our dogs is gonna increase. And then a question, and then I have concerns about the fee. I'm more I'm sorry, um, Representative Lorenzo, are you um, directing these questions to the sponsor or are you just speaking in terms This is of just my concern. Okay, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. So my concerns is also the low income people because as you know, if you do have um, animals and you like to take them to the, to the vet to, for the necessary stuff, you do know that it is rather costly. We don't have pet insurance as much as that would help you know, sometimes when you want to go in to go get, like, to go make Fluffy get his medicine, you end up with a $300 bill because there's no insurance. And that concerns me for the low-income people because what if they really want to keep their dog but they just simply cannot afford it? And I know that this bill is to try to see, okay, who could afford to take care of their dog, but it's sometimes it's not really more of the, maybe it is for, like, who could afford it, but it's more like, okay, I consider dogs to be miniature, like, treat a dog as you would treat a human. So to me, that's just kind of like, how can we let our dogs be taken away just because we can't afford it, but we could give it all the love that it really needs. And then what would happen if there's an overflow? And I know that maybe all of the, all of, all of the funding would be towards, um, towards having an animal shelter, but my concern would just be the dog fatality rate and what if owners use dogs for protection um, at their ranches? Personally, um, my family, we have a ranch and we use dogs as our protection and it's not like we're neglecting them, it's we, it's we check on them every day, we feed them, we give them water, but financially speaking, my grandmother cannot afford to chip six dogs that protect our property. So those are just my concerns. And then there are, so in my village of Varagata, we have this one dog and he belongs to our neighbor and not on a leash. He's very like calm. You know, he, he walks the kids towards their, like their bus stop. So what if someone takes him away because he doesn't have a chip and then our neighbor is like, where's my dog? But he, the dog is not harmful in any way. He just likes to wander around and goes home when he wants to go home. So those are my concerns of it and I really, and I do, I, I do support the intent of this bill because as, although I, I don't personally walk around my village, I do, I do know that who people who do and they, and they fear for their safety. So I support the overall intent. However, I, those are my concerns and I know that this bill is not a fix all bill, like we're not gonna fix everything, but those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Lorenzo. On the main motion, are there any other representatives who would like to speak? Representative Felicen, you are recognized. Hello, I, I would, oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to, so, what's that? Oh, <clears throat> I would like to just express my support for this bill. I do think this is a very ambitious bill. Um, I do think that this is a, I believe that this is uh, somewhat of a problem that is commonly overlooked by the general public, mainly because it has become the norm to have to walk around with a stick. <coughs> and I think this bill would somewhat help this, because I don't want my kids or grandkids to have to walk around with a stick or a baton or pepper spray, or not, maybe not pepper spray, that's, a little too much for a dog. <coughs> but yeah, I think, anyways, I think this bill is great with good intentions and I support it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Felicen. Uh, on the main motion, are there any other representatives? Representative DeChoso, you are, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to uh, express my support for the bill as well uh, as a co-sponsor for, uh, for this bill. Uh, it's, I, I also see this as also a, a big problem on, on Guam. I, re I remember driving uh, in, in Liguan and almost hitting like three, three strays on my way here. So I, I think, uh, you know, you could understand my concern for the amount of strays. So, yeah, I miss them if there was any concern there. But uh, so as an owner of uh, there, there are a lot of perspectives to, to, to look at this at this issue from. 
And uh, we've looked at it from the perspective of uh, the strays themselves. We've looked at it from, uh, f from financial reasons. One of the perspectives that I want to highlight is also the dogs that we own ourselves. Being, I, I'm an owner of two dogs. They're beautiful dogs. Uh, I like to think that I take care of them. You know? uh, they're really pretty. You know, I, I'm a classy guy like that. You know? And <clears throat> the point I'm getting at here is one of the biggest threats, I would say, for lack of a better term, uh, to the health of my dogs are stray dogs in my neighborhood. See, I let my, do my dogs uh, tend to roam around freely. They're outdoor dogs because, you know, they, they need to stretch their legs. Uh, they're outside more than I am. And so one of the biggest threats is these stray dogs who, who tend to transfer f uh, their ticks. I've seen it happen. Uh, they tend to harass my dogs. They, they bark. They growl. They make sounds, other sounds. And there's just, there's just an overall concern of safety for, uh, for the dogs that we own. So as a dog owner, I see why uh, curbing the, the population of strays is an important issue uh, for, uh, uh, that, this, that this bill would tackle. And so, yeah, that's, that's uh, just my perspective on the bill, why I, why I uh, support the bill. And, and uh, I, I implore the rest of the body to also uh, support this bill for the reasons uh, I stated and that other representatives stated as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Representative DeChoso. On the main motion, Representative Makepeace. I would just like to express my support of the bill as well, not only just for the dogs, but also for the kids, for the people that we know that walk around, for the people that explore, the people that enjoy our island. For me, I look at the stray animals and I feel sorry for them because they're out there day in, day out, no food, no water, no shelter. They're out there suffering. And at least with this bill, they'll have a chance to go to gain. They'll have a chance to get adopted rather than just sitting out there being alone and eventually dying. So I'm in support of that in favor of the, for the dogs, the stray animals. But I'm also in favor of it because of the different diseases that dogs can carry that they can be transferred uh, over to humans. Different things like rabies, different things that can affect humans and their lives. So not only am I in favor of it for the stray animals and taking care of them, but also for taking care of our people who we support and who we, and who we represent. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Makepeace. On the main motion, are there any other representatives who wish to speak? Representative Kenny McDonald, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, I would also like to express my concern for this bill because I feel it will allow for pet owners to responsibly care for their animals. And I'm sure taking the time to drive around Guam, you'll see in main roads and even residential areas that there are a surplus of stray animals as well as roadkill. And I would also like to bring up another concern that was said before that as a pet owner, um, I've experienced that my personal pets have been attacked by stray animals and have received serious health consequences from those attacks. And I feel this bill for pet licensing and registration will ensure that pet owners are formally deemed responsible for the care of their animals. And I feel this will in turn um, keep unwanted or unkept animals out of the public's concern by um, having the pet control be implemented. Thank you. Thank you, Representative McDonald. On the main motion, Representative Richards, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to express my support of this bill, but I would also like to express my discontent with how the bill was brought to the floor. I don't believe that it was proper. I don't think that we should have bypassed the committee meeting. I feel that if we're going to encourage committee meetings in general, but pull bills out of committee just to get them on the floor, to have something on the floor I think is, is unethical. And um, it has affected my opinion on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Richards. On the main motion. Any other representatives who wish to speak? If there are none, Vice Speaker McDonald, you are recognized. 
I want to thank everyone for their testimonies today. Um, you know, at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is taking responsibility for the pets that you have on your property. Because all it takes is keeping them on your property. All you have to do is tie them up or fence them in and make sure that they don't walk around. Because those dogs walking around are the main reason that people are afraid to walk around. And Speaker Santos was right when he alluded that my bill was not the perfect bill. I don't think it's the perfect bill, and I don't think this is where it ends. I think this bill is just the beginning of moving forward in the steps of making sure that pets and animals on Guam are taken care of. And in regards to finance, I really, really took that into consideration. I've looked at the states and their licensing laws, and I know that we as an island, are, it, it's not fair to compare it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. In the States, do you would have to renew your license yearly? And the penalty for not renewing your license is $300 compared to what this bill entails at the moment. It's renewed every three years. And if you look at one of the sections where it talks about the renewal of licenses. That fee is um, which jurisdiction again? This was, um, I looked at the, what do you call it? The minimum and the, the, what do you call it? When you put all of them together? Did you say it was in the States? It was in the States, okay. yes. Yeah, it was in the States. Um, I put, I, I was really clear in this, in this bill that the fees shall not exceed a certain amount of dollars because I took into consideration to make it easier on everyone who owns a pet to just have it registered at the clinic. And this fee is to, make sh it's to create competition within the clinics themselves so that people have the choice to go to one that may charge less than the other. But either way, $20 of that fee must go to the Department of Agriculture. Um, I can ask a question, right? Well, I'll ask it anyway. Um, it's the current law says uh, that there's a f the fee shall be established by the director. Do you know what the established fee is? Actually? I do not know what the established fee is, but in this bill, I did cross that out. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do understand the issue of of paying for your pet because I have a pet, and I honestly, I'm pretty sure I've paid more than five hundred dollars for that pet. <laughs> I, I lost count and I don't want to keep count because it, it hurts my bank and my, yeah, I, I just don't want to keep count anymore. But it also brings up the issue as when I'm walking my dog, you would want your dog to be safe because you, you take so much care of it. It's not safe when you have strays walking around and it, it, it only costs more if you don't get your dog if you don't take your dog to the clinic because they get all these diseases that the strays have. And there are a lot of diseases here on the island just because of all these strays. And like I said, at the end of the day, all that really matters is that you tie your dog or you keep it on your property because what I see is if this bill is to be law, Animal control has no right to go into your property unless they deem otherwise. So if your dog were to get a microchip and they, they see the dog walking around as a stray, they take it, they scan it, and they're able to tell right away if it's owned or not. If it's owned, they can bring the dog back to the house and do, they can either find it or find the person or do whatever else is necessary. If the dog does not have a microchip or is not registered, then that's when they'll take it and they'll take, they'll hopefully have an animal shelter established. Like I said, this is just the stepping stone. This is the beginning. And it's, it's I, I thank everyone for your support. And I, I really hope you take this into consideration because I, I really did put a lot of thought into this. And I know the way that we moved it on today wasn't, wasn't agreeable, but I think this was really, 
it was an imperative issue that needs to be discussed about because we hear about it all the time. We see it, we experience it, but yet nothing is done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Vice Speaker McDonald. Um, is there any motion? I make a motion to move Bill 18-31 to the third reading file. There's been a motion to place Bill number 18-31 to the third reading file. Are there any objections? There are none, so ordered. Uh, Speaker Santos? And with, and with that, we have exhausted our agenda for today. Um, we shall move on to uh, number 17, second roll call. Can I get the second roll call? Oh, Representative Valencia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to make a motion that the second roll call reflect the first roll call. There's been a motion to have second roll call uh, reflect first roll call. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, moving on to number 18, consideration of the daily file. Can I get the third reading of the bills and resolutions that we've heard today? Bill number 17-31, as amended on the floor, introduced by Javen W. Santos, an act to amend section 7107 of chapter 7, title 2, Guam Code Annotated, relative to rescheduling the Guam Youth Congress election in order to align with other student government elections. Uh, could I get a roll call? Representative Attaweg. Representative Angara. Representative Blas. Representative Blas, aye. Thank you. So, Representative Blas. Representative Blas, aye. Representative Casilla. Representative Casilla, aye. Representative DeChoso. Representative DeChoso, aye. Representative Felisan. Representative Felisan, aye. Representative LeBang. Representative LeBang, pass. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Lorenzo, aye. Representative Makepeace. Representative Makepeace, aye. Representative, oh, I'm sorry, Vice Speaker McDonald. Vice Speaker McDonald. Pass. Representative McDonald. Pass. Representative McDonald. Pass. Representative Quintaniza. Representative Quintaniza. Aye. Representative Richards. Representative Richards. Pass. Represent. Uh, Vice uh, Speaker Santos. Speaker Santos. Aye. Representative Valencia. Representative Valencia. Pass.
Representative LeBang. Representative LeBang, pass. Vice Speaker McDonald. Vice Speaker McDonald, nay. Representative McDonald. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Richards. Representative Richards, pass. Representative Valencia. Representative Valencia, aye. Representative Richards. Aye. Representative Richards. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm there. I'm sorry. Representative LeBang. Aye. Representative LeBang. Aye. With a vote of 12 ayes and one nay, uh, Bill 17-31 hereby passes. Moving on to Resolution 12-31. Resolution 12-31, introduced by Al, Al, Al Eldrick C. LeBang, Jane Angara, Byron Blas, Representative Kenny F. McDonald. Relative to respectfully requesting the Speaker of the 31st Guam Youth Congress, the Chairperson of the Committee on Rules of the 31st Guam Youth Congress, the Executive Director of the Legislature in Guam, and the Administrative Officer of the Guam Youth Congress to work together on oversight of the Excellence in Youth Leadership Award as stated in subsection 7111 and 7112 of Chapter 7, Title 2, Guam Code Annotated, and request the youth committee organizations and representatives of the 31st Guam Youth Congress to nominate youth leaders that meet the criteria stated in section 7112 of chapter 7, title 2, Guam Code Annotated. Roll call. Representative Blas. Representative Blas, aye. Representative Casilla. Representative Casilla, aye. Representative Delory. Oh, I'm sorry. Representative DeSocho. Representative DeSocho, aye. Representative Felisan. Representative Felisan, aye. Representative LeBang. Representative LeBang, aye. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Lorenzo, pass. Representative Makepeace. Representative Makepeace, aye. Vice Speaker McDonald. Vice Speaker McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Quintaniza. Representative Quintaniza, aye. Representative Richards. Aye. Representative Richards, aye. Speaker Santos. Speaker Santos, aye. Representative Valencia. Representative Valencia, aye. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Lorenzo, aye. By unanimous vote, Resolution 12-31 hereby passes. Moving on to Bill 18-31.
Bill number 18-31, as, as introduced by Keandra M. McDonald, Javen W. Santos, Kenny F. McDonald, Al Eldridge C. LeBang, Joshua M. DeSocio, Jane Angara, Tristan X. V. Quintaniza, Byron Blas, Davin Felisan, and Brianna Cruz. An act to amend subsection 34102 and 34103 of chapter 34, title 10, Guam Code Annotated, relative to protecting Guam communities by creating revenue for animal control and curbing the population of stray pets through licensing and regulation. Roll call. Representative Blas. Representative Blas, aye. Representative Casilla. Representative Casilla, pass. Representative DeSocho. Representative DeSocho, aye. Representative Felisan. Representative Felisan, aye. Representative LeBang. Representative LeBang, aye. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Lorenzo, pass. Representative Makepeace. Representative Makepeace, aye. Vice Speaker McDonald. Vice Speaker McDonald, aye. Representative McDonald. Representative McDonald, aye. Representative Quintaniza. Representative Quintaniza, aye. Representative Richards. Representative Richards, pass. Speaker Santos. Speaker Santos, aye. Representative Valencia. Representative Valencia, pass. Representative Casilla. Representative Casilla, pass. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Lorenzo, pass. Representative Richards. Representative Richards, pass. Representative Valencia. Representative Valencia, pass. Representative Casilla. Representative, Representative Casilla, pass. Um, abstain. Representative Casilla, nay. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Lorenzo, aye. Representative Richards. Nay. Representative Richards, nay. Representative Valencia. Representative Valencia, aye.
with a vote of 11 ayes and two nays, Bill 18-31 hereby passes. Moving on to Moving on to brief extension of remarks. Uh, is there anyone who would wish to talk about the issues that we've discussed today? Representative McDonald, you are recognized. I just want to say thank you to everyone who voted on this bill, whether it was a nay or a aye. Um, I really appreciate it, and all I want is, is feedback from everyone. I think this is a really like I said earlier, an imperative issue that needs to be addressed because we as an island have experienced seeing people and experiencing the fear of walking and running or doing whatever on our own streets, in our own communities where we've been chased by dogs or we have stray dogs coming into our own homes and stuff. But I just want to say thank you and I really appreciate it. Is there anyone else who would wish to speak on uh, the matters we discussed today? Representative Casilla, you are recognized. Uh, so I just wanted to explain myself. I, I passed on um, Bill 18. Um, I do agree with um, Representative Richards that this wasn't a, a formal way to bring it in. Um, I think one of the biggest, uh, and the one that influenced me most on passing on that, that this bill is that um, I feel that a bill shouldn't pass if it's not the perfect bill. I do know that um, it takes a while to create this seemingly perfect bill for us to uh, vote on. There's a, there's a conflict whether we should act now and uh, bring out a bill that will push attention versus um, waiting for a long time to present uh, a bill or a resolution that's good enough for for the the Guam legislature to talk about. Um, so I passed on this bill because I felt that it wasn't it wasn't at that stage where it was um, as perfect enough for us to rep for it to represent the the youth's voice um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the bill I should have uh, spoke about it but um, there's already uh, according to the public law um, there is already a fee it's just not stated and with this um, with this bill I would have specified it however with the amount of um, unspecified fees already I'm just not sure how it would have made a difference because if there are fees already that's being allocated, it's just not specified. Specifying it might not, uh, might not cause the change we want. And so um, I think there's a better way of getting the funds we need because that's the key issue that we were trying to address. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would wish to talk about the matters we've discussed today? Representative Richard, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, again, just to echo the sentiments that were just brought up by Representative Casilla, uh, you know that I did not support the way that uh, Bill 18 was brought to the floor. Um, the, the concerns from Representative Casilla and Representative Lorenzo are just a couple of examples on why the dialogue should not begin on the session floor in regards to approval or concern of a bill, and it should begin in the committee. And if we're going to begin that dialogue on the session floor, then why do we have committees at all? And I, I, my only regret today is that I did not move to place the bill back into committee. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Richards. Is there anyone else who would wish to discuss the matters we've discussed today. Representative LeBang, you're recognized. Um, Mr. Speaker, I just want to explain myself why it took time on voting for Bill 1731, because um, I will say 
there is two sides that I'm debating on on this amendment, but like I think voting I for this is the better way for this bill to be implemented. Like, because my reason if I vote nay is because we should mirror the Guam legislature, but at the sense, we need more involvement in Guam Youth Congress. And for schools and <clears throat> for schools like, we need most people to vote for us instead of by plurality, I would say. So that's all. Thank you, Representative LeBang. Is there anyone else that would like to make a, or who would like to talk about the issues that we discussed today? Uh, Representative Bloss, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to thank all the representatives here in today's session for um, passing Resolution 12-31. I look forward to the deliberations uh, which will be made in regards to the criteria for this award, since I do have a list of candidates who may be eligible. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Bloss. Is there anyone else who would wish to speak on the issues that we discussed today? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the issues that we discussed today? Seeing as there are none, moving on to announcements. Are there any announcements? Uh, Representative LeBang, you're recognized. Um, regarding for the resolution, okay, so um, I don't just limit anyone to vote, to nominate just from our body, anyone else can nominate. So like, I know as part of the resolution that the legislative secretary have to send out the word to other youth organizations about this award for the nomination. That's all. I'm just announcing that. So like, we can. The we can nominate. We can nominate. Yeah, we're not going to. All right, uh, is there any other announcements? Representative McDon uh, Vice Speaker McDonald, you're recognized. I probably should have done this with a brief extension of remarks, but I just want to thank JFK for coming and sitting in. And yes, it was it's pretty cool to have an audience here. <laughs> I hope you guys uh, enjoyed your time here and if you guys have any questions for us about like anything that we discussed today you guys can talk to us yeah yeah thank you for coming i hope you guys learned something uh yeah is there any other announcements uh representative bloss you are recognized as representative of uh, father duaney is more high school um, we do have an open house uh this coming monday It'll be from 9 o'clock in the morning to 11.30 a.m. So basically this is for um, incoming freshmen or two incoming juniors if they're interested in enrolling at FD. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make any announcements? Seeing as there are none, could I get a motion to adjourn this session? Uh, Representative Valencia, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this session subject to the call of the speaker. There's been a motion to adjourn subject to the call of the speaker. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. The Guam Youth Congress session is adjourned.